So, you've chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. expected to see you here. Felt sorry for the poor thing in all her festering glory. And now I want to manage her soul as well. I sow the seeds, I'll prune the mess. I, Leonardo, swear still upon my vows to the goddess. No one will despoil her soul. Certainly no beast wrapped in human skin. Soul isn't flesh enough for a sick beast. Enough with you, my friend. The might of the goddess does not die. Well, well, back for more, are you? Vicious one, aren't you? I knew it all along. And now you want to ravage her soul as well. You are no longer of use. You'll run free. I, Leonard, swear so upon my vows to the gods. No one will despoil her soul. Certainly no beast wrapped in human skin. What do you want with her soul? Isn't flesh enough? Blessed Rosaria.
I took the mantle of Lord of Choose Life. Oh. Hey! My blade of the dark moon, thy deeds merit great worship. I, Yoshka, captain of this company, hereby recognize thy service. This is a wonder of the Dark Moon, inherited from my brother for this very purpose. Please, take this. Thou art most deserving of it. As a shade of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, persevere in thy nightly duty, hunting down the gods' would-be foes. I would speak to my brother of this one day, of the shining new hope that joined our dear company. I speak of thee, of course. <laughs> the Dark Moon Knights were once led by my elder brother, the Dark Sun Gwendolyn. But he was stricken by illness, and leadership of the Knights fell to me. Then, Sullivan Rock, oh, where could my dear? If only he were here as. <laughs> Long ago, Nasa, but. Oh, eh the Dark Moon Knight, but there. Oh, if only he as. <laughs> Off so soon. May the Dark Moon watch over thee. And welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. My name is Alex, I am Silvermont, and yes, well I suppose since last time quite a few things have happened. Namely, I respect my character to uh, mostly Dex, and we're kind of over leveled at this point because I've been doing so much damn. That covenant grinding got me so many souls, and I spent most of them on you know, items instead of levels, but even so I'm still a bit over leveled. But uh yeah, we swapped to using the Drang Twin Spears, well sharp Drang Twin Spears and the Painting Guardian's Sharp Sword. Well that's interesting. They don't call it a sharp painting guardian sword, they call it a painting guardian sharp sword. That's really cool. And we're using that as our offhand because it's light, and frankly this seems a bit overpowered to me. I mean look at this. Spears are doing three two nine Guardian Sword's doing 338, and it weighs 1.5. I mean, it's not as overpowered as it was in the first Dark Souls, but it's still pretty damn good, this weapon. And I don't know, I've always kind of been a fan of it. I know it had a really negative um, stigma, I suppose, in Dark Souls 2, because, you know, people would just put it in their offhand and parry spam, which I'm doing anyway. Um, and, you know, just to point out, I'm only parry spamming because people are R1 spamming. And if you're going to spam a Dark Sword at me, you can be damn sure I'm going to parry that shit. But yeah, we respect because I wasn't really feeling the other build. And I'm not really sure why I went strength to begin with, but I'm sure I had a plan. It might have been to use great shields, but I just don't like great shields, I discovered. Or I remembered. Um... I want to go more faith. We've only got 22 faith at the moment, but well, I'm using at the moment I'm using deep protection, which is some sort of personal buff and blessed weapon. Probably the goal is to use like dark moon blade and uh, where's that spell? Lightning stake, because I think that sounds really cool. Oh, it takes two slots. Damn, I didn't realize it took two. Well, it sounds really cool though, so I kind of want to use Lightning Stake, but it's not going to be happening in this playthrough because at the moment we're just too high, and magic in this game just needs too much stat investment. So, yeah. But that's the goal. I'm trying to go for Dex Faith. I kind of just want to make it like a Dragoon, like a Dragon Slayer type character. Oh, you survived with the pixel. Okay. Uh, oh well. So, oh, let me think. This video should have started with 
like the Rosaria stuff and the Yorshka stuff. So now we're going to do another NPC quest line. And yeah, I apologize there was like no commentary on that stuff. That's because I kind of did it after I had stopped recording, but I still wanted to like, you know, I was just doing invasions and stuff. Speaking of which, I should read the ring. Um, I hate this ring, by the way. Where is it? Obscuring, obscuring ring. Hides the presence of the wearer when far away. It is said that Rosaria, the mother of rebirth, was robbed of her tongue by her firstborn and has been waiting for their return ever since. It's, I really don't like that ring. It's just irritating. And if you use it, I will be upset with you and stab you many, many times. But yeah. Some people think Rosaria is Guinevere because they say like, oh, the firstborn, but it's like, well, Gwyn's firstborn wasn't Guinevere's firstborn because Guinevere was Gwyn's daughter. So, I mean, I know the gods are kind of messed up, but I don't think Gwyn and Guinevere had a firstborn together. Of course, it could still be Guinevere. I personally don't think it is because uh, characters in Dark Souls very very rarely change name. How many characters do we know that have actually changed name? I can't think of any. Usually NPC names and boss names are very specific and true. Like Artorius, he wasn't called uh, Artorius of the Abyss, he wasn't called Abyss Walker Artorius, he was called Knight Artorius and so forth. And I mean in, even in this game items that refer to Artorius they, they don't change his name they just call him like Wolf Knight or stuff like that. Oh yeah, I forgot to buy his armor, but we'll do that at some point. So, I don't know. Rather than Rosaria, I think it would... Sorry, rather than Guinevere, I think it would make more sense if Rosaria were actually Gwyn's first wife. Like, whoever, you know, Guinevere's and Gwyndolin's mother was. But it could also very well be one of Guinevere's daughters. Because we had... um. Well, we've had two miracles now, both associated with Guinevere. One dropped, okay, one got from the Dancer's Soul, and one we got from, um, Rosaria's Soul. Was it these two? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, there were two miracles, both associated with Guinevere, and one from Dancer's Soul, one from Rosaria's Soul. Which you can also give back to her. But anyway, that's enough talking about that. Let's... Because I... I didn't actually need to. But I figured I might as well spend two points and get intelligence to ten. So we can do Orbex quest line. I know I've already talked about it earlier. But that's because I wasn't sure if we were going to do it or not. But now we're going to do it as we've got pretty much every scroll to give him. Well, well. There's something different about you, isn't there? Very well. Indeed, I am a sorcerer, with plenty to share. However, what champion demands service without recompense? Clearly, you are not that sort of woman. So you will make me a promise that in exchange for my teaching, you will bring me knowledge in the form of scrolls detailing sorcery's secrets. Well, can you assure me of this? Very well. You're no fool. I take it you understand the weight of a promise. I am Orbeck, a Vinheim. Unkindled one. I shall teach you sorceries. We will learn together. It shall be like our very own school. Vinheim, here to teach you sorceries. Let us begin with the basics. The ideal sorcerer bears the twin faces of the dragon. Oh, 
you could at least act as if you're paying attention. I don't mean to seem overbearing, but have you forgotten? In exchange for my sorceries, you are to bring me knowledge in the form of scrolls detailing the secrets of sorcery. I hope you're not one to break a promise. Oh my. This is stupendous. And the undead legion of Farron possesses sorceries quite unknown. Thank you for upholding your end of the bargain. I doubt I ever would have made this discovery alone. Now, let us unravel the thing, so you may put these new sorceries to use. <laughs> I don't mean to say in the fire hope. Oh my. You've made quite the discovery. This is a scroll of the prodigious Big Hat Logan. A masterful sorcerer, long missed in Minheim. And now we have a scroll. Right here in my very hands. I don't mean to seem overbearing, but have you forgotten? In exchange for my before, I hope. Unfathomable. This is a crystal sorcery. Created by the Pale Dragon. Thought only to exist in legend. I am ever grateful to you. This is truly sublime. I am afraid this is a debt I cannot repay. Only, I will be sure to unravel it for you. Just a moment. I don't mean to think in the I hope. Come again. Back again, I see. I suppose this means you're after sorceries. I don't mean to in the I hope. Oh my. Well, this is very unusual. It's from Ulysseel, an ancient land of golden sorceries. Not even the Dragon School possesses such a long lost scroll. What would the Xanthus scholars say with their ridiculous headwear? <laughs> they would simply slaver over this fight. <laughs> Again, I'm Orbeck of Vinheim. Here to teach you sorceries. Let us begin with the basics. Oh. Come again. Back again, I, I suppose. Again. Let, uh, again. Let, uh. Come again. One. Back again, I see. I suppose. Again. But, uh. sorcerer now. No mistake. You should have something to prove it. Go on. If I'm giving something away, you'd better well take it. <laughs> How do you like gimmicks, friend? This is a sign, a cipher, employed by sorcerers who use quietude to their advantage. With this, you can be sure to tell friend from foe from your very first encounter. It's a very old practice at this point, but one that you deserve to know. In Vinheim, I was an assassin, a sorcerer only in name, a killer for hire. What a fool I was, thinking one day I would learn real sorceries. 
When I became undead, I was exiled from the school. But here I am, now, exploring the depths of sorcery. All thanks to you, I might add. Again, let her promise to stay safe. Ah, well met, Ashen. Oh, what is it? Forgot something? You are no ordinary woman. All these sorceries and you've mastered every one. If this were the Dragon School, you'd be... Well... Overtly despised and banished from the place. Well, I suppose it's time I pack my bags. I would hate to see our agreement end sourly. Better left, tucked away, as a pleasant memory. You are no ordinary all if well, well I would have better left. Promise to stay safe. It's been nice running our own little school. Well that's the end of his quest line. So um now once we reload the area he will be gone and he will we can actually find his body dead in the grand archives, so I was just checking I've bought everything from him. Um, I wonder if there's any new NPC dialogue referring to him. I never actually thought about that last time. I didn't talk to the other NPCs. They Usually they never speak about each other with the exception of Grey Rat and Patches. And Grey Rat of course is dead, but... Well... I'll try that real quick and just see. I know Andre can talk about Hawkwood. Okay, I spoke to every NPC in Firelink with the exception of, um... What's her face? Arena. The Firekeeper 2.0. And none of them had anything to say, so... Not, nothing new to say, that is. Actually, speaking of, um... NPCs... I actually found out yesterday that apparently one of the voice actors of a certain NPC, well, a few NPCs actually, has actually seen some of my videos, and that was like really cool to know. More than that, apparently they liked the video, which was quite unbelievable, but very flattering. But, back to the matter at hand, now we should be able to find Orbeck's body. Yep, here we go. Oh, look, look at that amazing backstab. That's fine. Mmm, I don't like you stupid wax douchebags. I suppose the one downside of the Painting Guardian weapon is how ridiculously tiny the range is. But that's not really often a huge problem. It has bleed on it too, but I don't think I've made anything bleed yet. That's... I didn't take it because it was powerful, I just took it because it's a light dex weapon and I kind of think it looks like a it looks like a kind of something that you would use as an offhand weapon. Like you have your big ass spears and then you have like a little stabby thing. But here's Orbeck. And he's hollowed and dead. And we have his ashes. Quite an interesting story, Orbeck's. He wanted to be a sorcerer, but he was basically an assassin. And we actually learn quite a lot about the dragon school. He mentions how, like, oh, you're... 
you're like such a pro wizard. If this were the dragon school, you'd be... Well, they would pretty much hate you and kick you out. Kind of tells you a lot. It's kind of like a classic kind of institute of scholars in a fantasy setting, and they're all dickheads pretty much. But it's kind of nice to know. Well, at least it's nice to know more about the dragon school. It's not nice to know that they're all dickheads. Oh, right, I didn't read that. The Lothric bloodline was obsessed with creating a worthy heir, and when this proved impossible, resorted to unspeakable means. Suffice it to say, the path to linking the fire is a cursed one indeed. So what are these unspeakable means? What are these unspeakable memes? Is it something to do with Oseros and the dragons, or is it more to do with Lothric and Lorien linking their souls? Orbeck was fascinated with sorcery, but without means, so offered to serve as an assassin in exchange for acceptance into the Dragon Academy, believing that one day he could reinvent himself as a sorcerer. And he did. He, well, thanks to us, he became quite the sorcerer. But again, I'm just saying, FromSoft, you really missed a chance with his questline to have us, like, find a strayed tome. Like, Tome of Strayed, and when we give it to Orbeck, Strom just... Strom? <laughs> Strom. Strayed pops out of the tome. Like, it just explodes out of it and kills Orbeck, and it's like, you feeble, cursed one. Take my clothes, and please stop being so weak. Oh, well, maybe in the DLC one day. Strayed and Audia. Those are the characters I want to see back from Dark Souls 2. I don't really expect Strayed to be back, but... Why Audia has literally no reference in this game, I have no idea. Frankly, I think that's really disappointing, because this game has so many references to Demon Souls and Dark Souls, not many to Dark Souls 2, and I know Miyazaki wasn't really that involved in Dark Souls 2, and I know a lot of people hate Dark Souls 2, but I think it's kind of just... I don't know, I just don't think it's a good idea to ignore so much stuff from Dark Souls 2, especially the audio stuff, which not only was really good in Dark Souls 2, it was also perfectly setting up for not just a sequel, but for the end of a trilogy. And, I don't know. I just find that really disappointing. But you know, either way, that's going to do it for this episode. I apologise it's not been very action-packed. Next time, it's going to be very action-packed. And I'll see you then. I'll see you next time for more Dark Souls 3. Goodbye.